Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, in the studio bright and early Monday morning, and the Chiefs are going back to another <laughs> Super Bowl, this time at Arrowhead West, as we like to call it, in Las Vegas. Well, indeed, Allegiant Stadium has uh, been host to the Kansas City Chiefs on a number of occasions, but again, I'm going to reiterate what I said yesterday in the show and before. Home field, there is no such thing as home field in pro football. These guys know exactly what they're doing, but... But having said that, in yesterday's game, the far better team, in my opinion, won the game. The score 17-10 is not indicative of how much Kansas City dominated that football game, and, and they did. And what I must admit to you absolutely astounded me was the fact that Baltimore, which has made its entire season rushing the football with Gus Edwards and Lamar Jackson, and sometimes Zay Flowers running the ball as well, only rushed it 16 times yesterday for, I think it was 81 yards or something like that. 16 times by a team that has spent the entire season running it. Why they opted for the pass, I don't know, because Lamar Jackson is not even in the ballpark with Patrick Mahomes. Of course, nobody else is. He's the best player on the planet. But that, that in and of itself was a big difference, even though when you look at the numbers, Baltimore probably had better numbers in Kansas City, except for penalties and turnovers. Baltimore did themselves in. It was almost ludicrous. Why you allow taunting out on the field, why you allow certain instances from players, unnecessary roughness, roughing the pass, come on. That's juvenile stuff. That's college football. What what on earth the Ravens were doing, I have no idea. They either got carried away with themselves or thought they were going to win despite all the obstacles. But, hey, they were not the best team out there. Kansas City was, and the Chiefs deserve to be where they are. My turn. They believe their own hype. That's the first thing. And it started. Well, I said, that's and it's exactly yeah, yeah, what I, I just know. said. And, and, <laughs> and on top of it, it started, it started with... <laughs> The altercation that happened before the game when Justin Tucker would move his gear so we could start practicing. That's not how you treat. Bop, 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 bop. Not we, the Chiefs. Well, <laughs> that's we. I bleed gold and red. Second, the game plan, You, the, as far as the rushing number is concerned, the game plan the Kansas City Chiefs had was so perfect, not only on the offensive side of the ball, but the defensive side of the ball. And the offense this time really helped the defense by keeping them off the field. The, the way the offense ran the ball, we had time of possession by an hour. It was insane. So even though, yeah, they, they kind of abandoned the run because they started to have to chase us, and that's exactly by design. Except, Mike, that they began passing right away. Not at the very... They, not they, the they freaked out too early. And the yeah. numbers are pretty good, too, when you say that, too, because the Chiefs, I think, had the ball something like 73 times, around 73 plays, and Baltimore only 57. Yeah, the time of possession, a very big deal, and the fact that Chiefs were able able to dominate that ball game, and they did. Baltimore was not in the ballpark with them. Uh, they are a good team, no question about that, and they have good individuals, but they're not as good as Kansas City, and this will be a, a very interesting Super Bowl coming up. It will be, um, but again, I, I was saying it from the get-go, set the tone, they did, and that game plan was absolutely oh, perfect. It was. It was. Nobody flashy. can deny that. It was, oh, it was perfect. It was a very well-constructed plan. Mahomes followed it to the T. And, and did exactly what he had to do. He picked out the receivers, ran the ball when they had to. They ran the ball like 37, 32 times, I think it was, 32 rushes while Baltimore had 16. Again, it was the abandoning, almost a panic from Baltimore that they had to do something very quickly to get ahead of Kansas City, and they never did. So, indeed, you have the Chiefs going back to the Super Bowl and going up against the San Francisco 49ers. You might remember that when Mahomes made his initial Super Bowl appearance, it was against the 49ers, and San Francisco led much of that game. And Kansas City came back in the fourth period and put it away. But that was then. This is now. Should be a very interesting ball game. Coming um, up. Let's talk about the NFC Championship game real quick. I really thought the Lions would pull that one out. Well, they melt down. They yeah, had they did. a big meltdown that had something to do, in my opinion, with their youth. When San Francisco came back and started connecting on their passes, which they did not do in the first half, you saw Detroit kind of tighten up a little bit and not play with the loose abandon that they were in the first half. Detroit's a good football team, and if they keep everything intact, they'll be back, and they'll be back for a number of years to come. Like their coach, Campbell does a good job with the team, but the 49ers are experienced. 
playing at home that help them out. And San Francisco can do some things. I don't think, in my opinion, they're as good as Kansas City. That's a private opinion, and it's not based on bias or anything of that nature. I think the Chiefs probably have a superior ball club. But we'll wait and see what happens a couple of weeks from now. Still, it was the Lions game to win and the Lions game to lose. And that is what ex- that's exactly what happened. Kansas City Chiefs are once again going to the Super Bowl. I couldn't be happier. Uh, like I said, the game plan was so good against the Baltimore Ravens, but uh, last night watching the Lions 49ers game at first, I go, man, Lions are handling business, but it was a little too quick. 49ers ended up coming back to win, so now the uh, early odds are that the 49ers are favored, barely in this Yeah, one. quite honestly, I'm going to preface this remark by telling you that the all the pundits, and I, I can't think of a single one, all the pundits were wrong on the Chiefs and Ravens game. They all had the Ravens winning it, and I mean all of them. USA Today had every single one of their experts picking the Ravens to win. Mm-hmm. Guys really know about a lot about the game and how their game plans work. Okay, okay, that's the media. I'm down on the media anyway. Yes, you're right. The 49ers are a point and a half favorite. That's that's irrelevant. That's a pick 'em game, and I really feel that's the way it will end up as a pick 'em game. No, having said that, I do think the Chiefs are the better football team than San Francisco. I think they're the more versatile team, and I think Kansas City will win the Super Bowl. That's two weeks ahead of time. You never <laughs> never know what's going to happen prior to that. But at the moment, San Francisco is a point and a half pick. Be awesome to get Willie Gay back for that game. And I don't know about Tooney, but, uh, man, if they could figure that out, at least get him back for two weeks. But if it's a tear, there ain't no way that's happening. So who knows? A lot of hype to be built up. But, yes, I agree with you. I don't think it was that the national pundits wanted to just pick uh, a better team. It was more they were tired of the Kansas City Chiefs, and that's why they picked the Ravens. But that's not how these things are decided. And go Chiefs. How did the area basketball teams make out over the weekend? Bears had a big win over a rather weak team, Valparaiso. But I say a big win because they had that tremendous comeback against Drake in the double overtime earlier last week. And that was a, a signal win for Missouri State. So how they would play against Valparaiso was, I think, significant. And it was an 81-70 to 70 win for the Bears. That's not That doesn't even come close to saying how much the Bears dominated had points in the paint like 38 to 18 or something like that. Valparaiso just doesn't have the horses to be able to stay up with the Bears. The Lady Bears lost at Belmont and won at Murray State. They had two games on the road. The Belmont game was on Friday night, and the Lady Bears lost that one. Murray State, though, they came back with a big second half to score a win over the Lady Racers. Both of the Drury teams hosted Illinois Springfield and came away with victories, and Mizzou... Boy, Missouri is still looking for its first conference win. They went to Columbia, South Carolina, played the Gamecocks. Pretty good game, but Missouri came up on the short end of it again. So Missouri is now 0-7, 0-7 in conference play. And that's going to take a long way to have to come back when you get to the tournament where you're probably going to be a lower seed. Last but not least, the uh, spring training reporting (laughs) date for the... uh, Kansas City Royals and St. Louis Cardinals is coming up quick. It is. Today is January 29th. Both the Cardinals and the Royals, their full squads, will report on Monday, February 19th. That's less than a month away. The pitchers and catchers report prior to that. But yes, spring training is creeping up on us. Had an opportunity to visit with the baseball Bears and one of the major league batting coaches, Jason Hart from Fairgrove, and he said, oh, yeah, he said, it'll, it'll, it'll get underway here before too much longer. He is leaving on uh, February 12th. The Marlins and the Cardinals share the training camp. So it'll be, it'll be fascinating to see just exactly what happens. Well, I hope they enjoy that beautiful weather in Florida. <laughs> Ned, you have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.